Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. As far as submarines are concerned, the United States has a long history, beginning with the Turtle, the world's first submarine with a documented record in combat. Today, the United States has more than 65 submarines in its naval fleet. However, they are divided into three types. Ballistic missile submarines, attack submarines, and cruise missile submarines. Certainly, the entire U.S. Navy fleet is nuclear-powered, but is used for different missions. For instance, Ballistic missile submarines have a single mission of carrying nuclear submarine-launched ballistic missiles. In contrast, attack submarines carry out tactical missions, including sinking ships, launching cruise missiles, and gathering intelligence. On the other hand, Cruise missile submarines perform many of the same missions as attack submarines. Still, they are capable of carrying and launching large quantities of cruise missiles compared to typical attack submarines. Most of the action occurs in the control room of a submarine where the crew monitors the entire operations of the submarine, as well as steering it using a joystick similar to an airplane. Another distinctive feature of a submarine is its torpedo room, which serves as an essential compartment merely dedicated to storing and launching torpedoes. Performing chores day and night on a submarine is rigorous, and sailors need to stay fit throughout their mission. Therefore, a small compartment with gym machinery is also reserved for sailors so they can exercise and stay active and healthy. In addition, a small mess area is located within a submarine so the sailors can eat healthy food. Submarines can stay submerged under the sea surface for a long time, and there's limited space for food supplies. The cramped space in the submarines doesn't give much storage allowance, so these vessels can only carry supplies that last roughly about 90 days. Once the food supplies are exhausted, they must be replenished to ensure the continuity of operation. Therefore, the submarines must resurface to resupply in the open sea. Months before a submarine's deployment to sea, meticulous planning and coordination ensure the vessel continuously receives its supplies, whether from another vessel or dropped from the sky above. The C-17 Globemaster features a joint precision airdrop system, which utilizes a global positioning satellite, steering parachutes, and an onboard computer, allowing the pilot to compute the exact location of the airdrop while considering the altitude, wind direction, and speed of the aircraft. This results in an accurate landing of the package on the sea surface, which is later retrieved by the crew on the submarine. When the C-17 airdrops the supplies, retrieving them back to the submarine is a very hectic task. Moreover, the aircraft cannot make a precise drop every time. Therefore, 
An effective method is to airdrop supplies directly onto the submarine's deck with the help of a helicopter, which uses a cargo hook and cargo netting to airdrop supplies. The cargo container is put into the net, and the helicopter drops the supplies while hovering over the submarines. Besides using transport aircraft like the C-17 or helicopters, the U.S. Navy uses drone technology to resupply submarines in the open sea. Even though this is a new technology, small quadrotor drones have successfully delivered small items or equipment to the submarine. This technology is being improved continuously to carry heavy payloads to the battlefront. While all this happens outside the submarine, life inside it is even more hectic, particularly because of the maintenance routines. The submariners must continuously check the heat exchange filter, cooler, and catalyst switches for optimal safety. It seems like the daily routines of these sailors include never-ending chores, like taking notes and entering vital data into advanced machinery. In addition, the submariners need to constantly tighten and twist knobs to avoid any mishaps, and utilize touchscreens to track the submarine's parameters. From oil levels and battery life to heavy-duty sensors, everything must be monitored for successful undersea operations. In addition to maintenance, a critical part of the submarine is managing its payload, which includes torpedoes, missiles, and other weaponry. Moreover, a submarine also carries other things in its payload, like sonar decoys, sensors, and unmanned vehicles that are typically deployed to gather intelligence. All weapons are loaded and launched by sailors, depending upon the mission requirements. A submarine's payload can be launched into the ocean using a variety of interfaces like hatches, torpedo tubes, three or six inch launchers, and larger vertical tubes. Before these state-of-the-art interfaces are put onto a submarine, they are thoroughly tested and maintained by engineers at a land-based facility to ensure their operational efficiency. The engineers ensure the interfaces are easy to use and ready to be deployed onto a submarine. A submarine can destroy targets in a matter of minutes, but instead of being afraid of attacks by enemy warships, the biggest threat for sailors is starting a fire inside a submarine. In fact, fires have proven to be the most common reason for casualties aboard a submarine. Therefore, Submarine crews are frequently trained to learn how to prevent and address fires. Since submarines are fully enclosed, there is no way for smoke and heat to escape into the atmosphere, which causes the smoke to rise and occupy the highest spot of the submarine, where the entire control equipment is located. Fires can move quickly from deck to deck because each level is not self-contained. A 
According to the U.S. Navy, a fire could sweep through an entire submarine in under 30 minutes. For this reason, fire drills are more common than almost any other exercise on board. During a fire drill, crew members wear a protective breathing apparatus to minimize smoke inhalation. On the other hand, control room personnel monitor the spread of the fire and update the entire crew via the PA system. Meanwhile, the entire crew fights the fire using hoses spread around the ship. Once the fire is out, the crew performs a damage assessment to determine whether the submarine can continue its mission. Another essential exercise is search and rescue training, which is conducted annually. This exercise focuses on a team's ability to respond to a sinking submarine. Typically, it is a two-day exercise during which the trainees perform search and rescue procedures to simulate actual events. This increases their readiness capabilities in a distressed submarine situation. Time is of the essence when rescuing a distressed submarine, and any second wasted could be the difference between life and death. So these trainees are taught to act quickly without making a mistake. Undersea Rescue Command is the sole provider of U.S. submarine rescue support. Its mission is worldwide submarine assessment, intervention, and rescue. The most important job of this department is conducting submarine rescue chamber operations. Operated by two crew members, the submarine rescue chamber is lowered to the submarine by a tethered cable. Go ahead and set it to close. Did you take that off? Jet hatch 542 to close. Once reached, the chamber seals over the submarine's hatch, allowing the sailors to be safely transferred to the rescue chamber. All right, there. The submarine rescue chamber can rescue up to six people at a time and reach a submarine at depths of 850 feet. It consists of an upper and lower compartment. The upper compartment is maintained at atmospheric pressure and contains operators, passengers, and controls. whereas the lower compartment is flooded at ambient sea pressure and blown dry after mating to transfer personnel. It contains a downhaul drum and spooling device. The ballast tanks are normally dry but flooded during the mating process to provide additional weight. All in all, the SRC is considered one of the most important components of the search and rescue operations for submariners. Life aboard a submarine is a unique blend of resilience, innovation and teamwork. with advanced technologies and thorough training ensuring both operational success and the safety of the crew. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.